that wants to, to take place, but we have to be moving in and be diligently and proficiently operating in our gifts and our talents before that promotion is going to occur. And, and how many of y'all used to go roller skating? Back in the day, I mean, Broadway, Skateland, wherever. Some of y'all, how many of y'all, I want to know this. Y'all put on the little dresses and y'all put on, yeah, Cindy Hargrove. Right now, this is not a speed skating event. It's not a couple skating event. It's what we call an all skate, okay? An all skate, so whatever level you're at, Whatever ability you have or don't have, if you have to hold the rails around the wall, that's fine. But this is an all skate. So everybody is in the rink. Everybody has skates on. Everybody participates and receives, okay? This is an all skate. Springboard scriptures for me. I'll usually use them as my base scriptures. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Before you were substance in your mother's womb, he the Lord knew you and he sanctified you, which means he set you apart for a purpose. 2 Timothy 1.9 says that the calling you've received is one of a holy calling that was given to you before time began. Philippians 1.6 1, Philippians 1, says, Being confident of this very thing, he the Lord who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the coming of Christ. And Romans 29.11, I believe, or 11.29 says that the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Okay? Leonard Ravenhill, some of y'all know who he is. He's a crusty old guy that never minced words. He, didn't, he wasn't in it for the, the powder puff. He wasn't in it for the, the cookies and the milk and stuff like that. He just kind of told it like it is. And I looked up several months ago quotes on Leonard Ravenhill, and the Lord said, this is where the message will start, and you'll begin to identify if the whole, through the Holy Spirit if this quote applies to you, latch on to it, receive it, and then be obedient to the Lord. And then we just got a few scriptures to share with you. Jesus did not come into the world to make bad men good. He came into the world to make dead men live. In the early church, signs and wonders and miracles followed. They cast out demons, blindness, and paralysis. That's normal Christianity. We're so subnormal that if we ever became normal, they, the world, would think we're abnormal. Mm -hmm. This is one that really got me. I'm sick to death of the so-called Christianity of our day. What's supernatural about it? When do people come out of the sanctuary awed and can't speak for an hour because God has been in glory there? Dear God, as soon as we walk out, we're talking football, sports, something, or there's going to be a big sale downtown or somewhere. We're not caught up into eternity. That's Leonard Ravenhill. That's not me. When did you last tiptoe out of the sanctuary when you couldn't say a word to anybody because you were so overwhelmed with the glory of God? Sin will keep you from this book, or this book will keep you from sin. This is, this is a good one here, too. The sinner's prayer has sent more people to hell than all the taverns in America. Now, think about that. We've all been involved in some type of ministry where we've been down at the altar and led somebody into the presence of the Lord, and they've said some words, but we've never followed up. We don't know if it was an emotional response. So sometimes we do so much damage by just having them recite something because there's more to it than just reciting words. How about this one? We have too many preacherettes preaching too many sermonettes to too many Christianettes smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Leonard Ravenhill. One person said to me, if I lead someone to Christ on the street, which church should I send him to? Sending someone to church today is like taking a newborn baby and putting it in a refrigerator. I want a place that vibrates with God and vibrates with eternity. Someone asked me, do you pray for the dead? I said, no, I preach to them. I think every pew in every church is death row. Think about that. They're dead. They sing about God. They talk about God, but they're dead. They have no living relationship with God. The only vision many of us have is television. <laughs> Wet-eyed preachers never produce dry sermons. Every meeting, people go out damned or delivered, and a lot hangs on the preacher. I don't ask people if they're saved anymore. I look them straight in the eye and say, does Christ live inside of you? Amen. You can go to hell at the communion table or the gambling table if Jesus hasn't saved you. Think about that one. I'm just going to read this last one. Christianity is not a sinning, repenting religion. It's a victorious religion. There should be a place where we quit our sinning. Leonard Ravenhill. 
Father, as we get in the Word, we're going to move very swiftly and give you ample time, Lord, to minister and move in your spirit like only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. When I read these names and I read these references, the Holy Spirit is going to compel you. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, it's going to compel you to latch on with this biblical character. And at the end, you're going to come up and you're going to get ministered to according to that biblical character's gift and that spirit in them. And that's going to be stirred up because what the Lord has told me is that when you gravitate toward that biblical character... We've wanted to know, well, what's my calling and what's my gifting and what should I be doing in this body where I'm at right now? In this body right here, there are no bench warmers. This is supposed to be an active, moving, getting things off high center church. If it was any different, then we'd be somewhere else, but we're here. We're supposed to be free. We welcome the lost, the, 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 the reprobate, all the things in. So we have to be actively moving in our gift and our calling. Is there an Abraham in the house? Is there an Abraham in the house? Is there an Abraham that when God says move, you move? When God says go, you go without delay? Is there an Abraham that will not settle for Ishmael, but will wait for their Isaac as God has promised? Is there an Abraham that will lay down their Isaac knowing that God will provide a substitute and fulfill his promise? Is there an Abraham in the house? Is there a Jacob in the house? Is there a Jacob that will have the grit and tenacity to not let go until they receive their blessing from the Lord, even if their hip is dislocated? Is there a Jacob in the house? Is there a Joseph in the house? Is there a Joseph that will stand righteous before a holy God, even in the midst of accusations, false imprisonments, yet then receiving their promotion? Is there a Joseph in the house? Is there a Moses in the house? Is there a Moses in the house? Is there a Moses that will say yes when God calls you to lead the two million out of bondage? Is there a Moses that will say yes to the call of God even through their self-imposed inadequacies? Is there a Moses in the house? Is there an Elijah in the house? Is there an Elijah that will take on the 450 prophets of Baal and stern, stand firm in the belief that my God is bigger, stronger, and more powerful than the enemy and will show himself strong on my behalf if I will just do what he says and how he says to do it? Is there an Elijah in the house? Is there an Elisha in the house? Is there an Elisha that is bold enough to ask, give me a double portion? Is there an Elisha in the house? Is there an Ezekiel in the house? Is there an Ezekiel in this house? Is there an Ezekiel that when God shows you a valley of dry bones, that you will prophesy, bones come together, breath of God enter in, so that these become an exceedingly great army? Is there an Ezekiel in the house? Is there a Joshua in the house? Is there a Joshua that will confidently wait for their time of promotion, even if it seems like it's 40 years? Is there a Joshua that will declare, Choose you this day whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Is there a Joshua in the house? Is there a David in the house? Yeah. Is there a David in the house is there a David that will take on their Goliath and say who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dare defy himself against the living God is there a David in the house that will dance before the Lord with all his might with leaping and whirling and not care what anybody says is there a David that if you have a Bathsheba moment that you will seek after the prophet Nathan before Nathan the prophet seeks after you is there a David in the house that's strong. Is there a Daniel in the house? Is there a Daniel that will pursue a purpose in their heart not to defile themselves with the delicacies from the king's table? Is there a Daniel that will pray until God brings the answer, even if it takes 21 days? Is there a Daniel that even in the midst of the lion's den, you know God has shut the mouth of the enemy, barring from Isaiah... No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And any tongue that rises up in judgment against me has already been condemned. Is there a Daniel in the house? Is there an Isaiah in the house? 
is there in Isaiah that when God asks, whom shall we send? You respond, here I am, Lord, send me. Is there an Isaiah in the house? Is there a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the house? Is there a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the house? And if you'll turn in your Bibles real quickly to Daniel 3. Daniel 3, starting with verse 8, and I'm reading. Therefore, at the time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and expression in his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. And he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? And they answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together. They saw that these men, on whose bodies the fire had no power, the hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments afflicted, and the smell of fire was not on them. Is there a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the house? Is there a John the Baptist in the house? Is there a John the Baptist in the house that will boldly proclaim the second coming of Christ and once again boldly declare, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand? Is there a John the Baptist in the house? Is there a centurion in the house? Is there a centurion in this house? Is there a centurion that when you're in the presence of the Lord and you ask him to go like the centurion did... He says, well, let me go with you. He says, you're a man of authority. I'm a man of authority. And all you have to say, and it'll take place. Is there a centurion in this place where your faith is that great? Getting close here. Is there the one leper in the house? Is there the one leper that when you receive your healing, you will come back and praise the living God? Or will you go off as the other nine? Is there a the one leper in the house. The ones I ask, if you would come up, 
to pray. If you'll come up, Don and Barbara. Where'd she go? Robert, come up here, please. Singer of the song. David, come on. Remember at first I said that I was going to, I, I knew that the Lord was going to deal with all of us. We all fit the profile of one of these biblical characters. Some of it started with the, the, the quotes we read. But all of us fit the profile of one of these biblical characters. And so what I want to take place for, for just a few, it's not even 12 o'clock, guys. I went fast. <laughs> but I want to give God ample time to minister. And so, if you, if you feel like you're, I wrote it down. This is going to take action on your part. If you felt attached to Abraham, Jacob, or Joseph, I need you to come up here with Don and Barbara. I, did anybody feel connected with Abraham, Joseph, or Jacob? Come and stand with Don and Barbara. Y'all may want to spread out. If you felt like Elijah, Elisha, and Ezekiel, and you're going to prophesy to these dry bones when you see them and pray, prophesy breath, where are you at, honey? Raise your hand. Go down there at the end. If you were a Moses, a Joshua, or that Roman centurion, David's raising his hand over there. Go over there. If you argue with the Lord about your own self-imposed inadequacies, and you need to be released from that, go over there. Where's Jackie? Right here. If you're wanting that spirit of David stirred up in your life, where are you going to be at, honey? Oh, okay. You can bring it up here. That's fine. Robert, where you at? If you're going to be a Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego... You go stand in front of Robert. He's going to pray with you. Spirit of David, the releasing of David, the worshiper, extravagant worship, come to Jackie. Where's Doug at? Doug Benton, if you want the evangelistic spirit of John the Baptist, go down there. He's going to stir you up. And Mark, I'm, I know you're here, but I want you to pray. If you feel like you're that one leper, that you know you'll come back when the nine go, come here and let him pray for you and let him stir that up. And there's one more, but I'm not going to read it until after we finish this. So everybody just close your eyes for a second. Father, each person, each person has been drawn by a particular characteristic that they recognized when I read the, their name the biblical character. And Lord, that's what drew them. Lord, these men and women that are standing up here to minister, stir the Spirit in them. And they might have thought they prepared, but Lord, you didn't give them everything, but now release it in their lives so they can pray for these that have come up. So Father, bless it, ignite it, and start it. In Jesus' name. Stand up here corporately. They're going to speak corporately over you. They're going to lay hands on you. They're not going to give each single word person a prophetic word unless they have one for you. But get close, come up, and let them just lay hands on you and give them what God has. David. Jackie, if you'll come up here to the platform. Guys, if y'all stay, just stop right where you're at. Keep praying if you're praying. But this is how we're going to finish. I purposely did not read the last who's in the house for this moment. Is there an unbeliever in the house? Is there an unbeliever that must first receive Christ? Is there an unbeliever that will take the Lord's yoke upon them and learn of Him? Is there an unbeliever that will be disciplined by the Word of God, empowered by the Word of God, transformed by the Word of God and led by the Holy Spirit. 
is there an unbeliever in the house? And how we're going to close is that I asked Jackie at the very first of the service to meditate on the word holy. And I'm going to turn her loose to sing a song, hallelujah, about holiness over us. And it's not going to have words, so don't try to follow along. Just close your eyes. When she finishes, she'll pray and dismiss us. Go ahead, Jackie.
Thank you, God, that you did call us to you. And you have called people today, Lord, that might not know you. You always offer us an invitation to know you, to know you better. So we just take that this morning. We ask for greater revelation of who you are greater revelation of who we are. And in turn, we just bow to the Holy One this morning. 